Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Bartimaeus the man we read about in this story, left his cloak behind. I wonder if he had been sitting on it as he huddled by the side of the road day after day, holding his hands out to those who passed, hoping for someone to share some money or food. Or I wonder if he was wearing it to keep away a chill as long hours spent sitting and begging made his limbs stiff. Did he sleep curled up in his cloak? Did he pull it over his head when it rained? Did others know him by the sight of it? Perhaps Bartimaeus' days felt monotonous since begging was his only option for survival. He had to hit the streets day after day just to get by. Or perhaps his days felt precarious since he had little control over his options and was dependent on the mercy of others. We all know that people can be merciless. On one particular day, though, something new happens to Bartimaeus. Someone new happens. Jesus comes by. Now, Bartimaeus has heard of Jesus, his miracle workings, his healings, his radical teachings of compassion. Although he's never met him before, so confident is Bartimaeus that Jesus can change his life that he jumps up, leaves aside his old life and his cloak, and runs to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asks, and Bartimaeus already knows the answer. Let me see. Jesus grants his request as quick as a word, and Bartimaeus can see. It's not just that he sees with his eyes. Bartimaeus sees as in he understands who Jesus is. Even before he could see with his eyes, Bartimaeus had that kind of sight. We might say before he had sight, he had insight. He called Jesus son of David. It's a royal term, implying that Jesus is fit for the throne, fit to rule over the whole land, as David, the king of Israel, had so many centuries earlier. Now, Jesus has been telling people for months not to spread the word that he is the Messiah, but word has gotten out anyway. And Bartimaeus, a beggar in Jericho, has already heard about Jesus and is instantly ready to proclaim allegiance to him. Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus gives Bartimaeus physical sight to accompany the spiritual insight he already has. And notice what Bartimaeus does in response. He follows Jesus on the way. We should be clear that Jesus is on the way to the cross. He has encountered Bartimaeus in Jericho. Jericho is an ancient city, uh, a little bit outside of Jerusalem on the Judean plains. If we were to read further in Mark's gospel, the very next story we would read is about Jesus entering Jerusalem to shouts of Hosanna and waving palm branches. I'm pretty sure you know where that road leads him. 
Although this story is about healing and restoration for Bartimaeus, it's also about the way of discipleship that leads through the cross. It is about the willingness to drop what has been, leave any hindrances behind, and follow Jesus where he leads. Perhaps Bartimaeus has left behind all his inhibitions and questions back there on that Jericho roadside where his cloak was discarded. Perhaps he still carries with him some doubts, but he has joined the Jesus movement just in time to see the heart of it all. Jesus' willingness to die for love of the world and then conquer death for the sake of life. That story, the passion of Jesus, is also a story about healing and restoration. It isn't without pain and suffering. But the pain and suffering are not the end of the story. The cross is not the end of the story. I would say that even resurrection is not the end of the story. It's only the beginning. I recently went to this conference that all the pastors in the area go to, and our speaker was a New Testament scholar. And she kept repeating this great line that the Gospels were written not because something had ended, but because something was beginning. The Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they have this context of tension and fear. The occupation of the Roman Empire looms in the background of the story. And the tension between Jesus and the powerful people around him, it just builds and builds until eventually he is executed for treasonous crimes. That sure seems like an ending, and a sad and unexpected ending at that. Even when the grave is found empty, Jesus' followers are still scared and confused. We might remember that this very gospel that we have been reading these past months, the gospel of Mark, ends with women running from Jesus' tomb, afraid and not speaking to anyone. But in the years after that event, Jesus' followers wouldn't stop telling this story about Jesus being killed on a cross. They told it to people who told it to other people. They wrote it down and made copies and sent them all over the known world. They wrote hymns and poems retelling this story about Jesus' death. Why? Because they started to realize that Jesus' death and resurrection was the start of something new. It opened a door to transformation that they hadn't even understood was possible, even when they witnessed Jesus' incredible ministry. Jesus' death changed death for all humanity. And Jesus' resurrection brought life in a whole new way for those who were willing to put their trust in Jesus' promises. Bartimaeus was willing to put his trust in Jesus, and it transforms his life. It's not that it erases all these years of struggle because he's healed. They are still part of his experience. But Jesus opens the door to new possibilities for him beyond that struggle. Bartimaeus leaves something behind and steps into something new. Now, as you hear this story today, you might find yourself at various places in it. I'm going to lift up three phrases from this gospel text. It's written in your order of service if you want to look at this, uh, the text itself. So I hope that you'll reflect on whether they resonate with you right now. Here's this first verse from the beginning of the story. The first phrase is sitting by the roadside. That's what we hear about Bartimaeus. He's sitting by the roadside. And that might be you right now. You might know well the longing and desperation that Bartimaeus experienced. You might feel depleted, lacking, in need of something you don't have, like a beggar in a different sense. You might feel frustrated by how hard it is to find help when you need it, and how stuck your life seems in this chapter. Maybe you feel like you're still waiting for Jesus to come by. You've heard about him, but you haven't yet encountered him personally. He just doesn't feel that close yet. If you're in a moment like that, a sitting by the roadside moment, the spiritual practice for you is right there in the waiting, 
Waiting itself is a spiritual practice. Remember, Bartimaeus had lived years of his life dependent on the support of others. Accepting hospitality and compassion is just as much a spiritual practice as offering hospitality and compassion. Honestly, sometimes it's an even more challenging one. And if you're still sitting by the roadside, be anticipating that question that Jesus asks Bartimaeus when he does arrive. What do you want me to do for you? Bartimaeus had the answer ready when God came to ask, and he wasn't hesitant to say it aloud. It's not only help from other people that can aid us, but help from God as well. I meet with a spiritual director about once a month, and a few weeks ago when I was sharing some of my own faith struggles, she said, you know, Bristol, this sounds like an obvious thing, but uh, have you asked God for help with this? Bring your own needs, your desires, your hopes to God in prayer. It might feel obvious, but sometimes it's so obvious we forget to do it. Ask God to help you in this. Or maybe that's not where you are. So maybe this is you from verse 49. Take heart, Jesus is calling you. Take heart, get up, he's calling you. That's what the people say to Bartimaeus. So maybe you're at this moment when Jesus invites Bartimaeus to come closer. Maybe the door to new possibility is open in front of you and you need to take heart to have that courage to walk through. Maybe you've heard the invitation to something new and you're discerning whether or not to accept it. If this is you, the time for waiting and receiving might be over, now might be the time for letting go instead. Is there something you're holding on to that you need to let go of in order to move into this new moment? Do you need to leave your cloak, so to speak, behind to set down something of the old in order that you might take up something new? That's the practice. Let go of what needs to be left behind. The New Testament often describes conversion as being like becoming a new creation. When you put your trust in Jesus, Jesus will transform you, open your eyes to see new things. Who you were is no longer. Who you are is someone new in Christ. So maybe this is you. Take heart. Jesus is calling you. Or here's the final one. Maybe you're here in verse 52. When, G when Bartimaeus hears this response from Jesus, it says he followed him on the way. Maybe you are following Jesus on the way. Because the choice to follow Jesus is not a final decision that ends something. It's a new beginning that starts something. Faith is an ever-evolving, lifelong journey. If you're following Jesus on the way, what is the next step in front of you? What is the challenge to greater discipleship that you are hearing? You don't need to have it all figured out. You don't have to reach the destination. You just have to take the most faithful next step. So if you're not sitting by the roadside and you're not leaving your cloak behind, I hope you might find yourself here, following Jesus on the way following Jesus to the cross, being willing to grow in self-sacrificing love that every day of your life might be in service to the gospel. So if you didn't remember those three phrases, that's okay. I have a help for you. Um, I'm going to pass around some baskets, and they have these little strips of paper in them. There are three different options. They're written with each of these three phrases, and each one has a little image. Sitting by the roadside, Take heart, Jesus is calling you and following him on the way. So as the baskets are, are passed, please feel free to take one. If we run out, I'll make more copies. If you all want one or the other, we'll find a way to get more. I have plenty. Um, and you might take a moment to even write on the back why it is that you chose this today, why you feel you're at this place in your journey, or what your prayer is for God uh, to be with you at this moment. And as we're passing the baskets, Becca is going to sing through um, our hymn of the day. It's a new one, and it's only two verses long. So um, you can just listen uh, as you reflect for a bit. And then uh, once we've passed the baskets, uh, we'll, we'll stop and we'll stand and sing together uh, through the whole hymn once more. So friends, know that wherever you find yourself on the journey, one of these three places or somewhere else entirely, 
God is always with you in that journey and never leaves you alone.